plant my feet on the rock to say, He put a song in my soul today, a song of praise. Hallelujah. He brought me out of the miry clay. He plant my feet on the rock to stay. He put a song in my soul today, a song of praise. Hallelujah. Oh, yes. He brought me out of the miry clay. He let my feet on the rock to stay. He put a song in my soul today, a song of praise. Hallelujah. Oh, yes. He brought me out of the miry clay. He put my feet on the rock to stay. He put a song in my soul today. On the rock to stay, he put a song in my soul today. A song of praise. Everybody clap your hands. He brought me out of the miry clay. He put my feet on the rock to stay. He put a song in my soul today. A song of praise. He brought me out, yeah. He brought me out of the miry clay. He put my feet on the rock to stay. He put a song in my soul today, a song of praise. Hallelujah. Yeah. We've been so good. 
And God, I look to you. Hallelujah. I won't be overwhelmed. Yes, thank you, Jesus. Give me visions to see things like you do. How many of you want to see things Amen. like he does? Praise Give us Lord. vision for this year, God. We don't know what we're what will happen, but we put our life, we put our all before you. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. God, I look to you. I won't be overwhelmed. Give me vision. To see things like you do, God, I look to you. You're where my help comes from. Give me wisdom. You know just what to do. Yeah. Lord, we look to you today. We lift you up, Jesus. Oh, 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 God, God, I look to you. I won't be overwhelmed. Give me vision. Give me vision. To see things like, to see things like you do. God, I look to you. You wear, you wear my help comes from. Give me wisdom. Give me wisdom. You know just what. You know just what to do. Let's lift our voice and say, And I will love you, and I will love you, Lord, my strength. I will love you, I will love you, Lord, my Lord, we declare, I will love you, Lord. Forever, forever, all my days, I will love you, God. I will love you, I will love you, Lord, my strength. You're my strength, Lord. I will love you, Lord, my shield. You're my shield. I will love you, Lord, my forever. Forever, all my days, I will love you, God. I will love you, I will love you, Lord, my strength. You're my strength, Lord. I will love you, Lord, my You're my hiding place. I will love you, Lord, my rock. Forever, forever, all my days. I will love you, God. Let's lift our hands and sing it again. God, I look. God, I look to you. I won't be overwhelmed. Give me vision. To see things like. To see things like you do. God, I look to you. You're where my help comes from. Give me wisdom to you know just what to do. Ooh. Lord, we praise you. I will love you. I will love you, Lord, my strength. I will love you. I will love you, Lord. Oh, 
should reign, Lord. Reign, Jesus, reign. King of Zion, King of Zion, to the fire. Reign, reign, Jesus, reign. Oh, you are King of Zion, King of Zion. to give him glory let us continue to praise his name praise the Lord our God is worthy and today we have come to lift up his holy name to praise and worship him and to give him thanks and honor word tells us, O oh, come, let us sing unto the Lord, let us make a joyful noise unto the rock of our salvation. Let us come before his presence with thanksgiving and make a joyful noise unto him with psalms. For the Lord is great and a great king above all gods. This morning we have come to let him know that he is our sovereign Lord and we worship none other, we praise none other, but our Lord, our King. Amen. All the other gods of the earth, they are idols, but we praise our God the great God, the great God, hallelujah. When we talk about our God, we will have to specify and make him exceptional because there are some claim gods that are around, but the great God, hallelujah, he is to be praised, he is to be worshiped, and he is to be adored. I bring greetings this morning to my pastor and his family, all other ministers and their family. 
I greet you this morning in the name of Jesus. My name is Errol Brown, and I'm here this morning to take us through this portion of the service. I trust and I pray that as we go through this time, our hearts will be blessed, and we will see the reason why we worship, knowing that our God is worthy to be praised. The song we sung earlier on, it said that, you are my strength, you are my shield, and you are my rock. Think of those three things that we are naming this morning, strength, shield, and rock. And if we know that we can boast in him as our shield, our rock and our strength this morning, we have no reason to doubt or to fear the God we serve. Amen. For he is my rock, he is my shield, and he is my source. Amen. And we bless his name today, knowing that we can rely on him. In spite of it all, we can always trust him. So as we come this morning, come, let us worship. Come, let us praise the Lord. And come, let us sing unto him. I know that we have a snowstorm yesterday, and it has ampered some of us being here this morning. But wherever you are this morning, I know that our listenership should be increased right now, because some of you are unable to be here, still digging out your cars and your driveways. I sympathize with you, but I pray that God will give you strength, and you will get over it. Amen? But we thank the Lord that sent the snow, the rain, yes. hallelujah, the wind and everything. And we're not murmuring or complaining today, but we're just praising his holy and worthy name. Hallelujah. Yes, Jesus reigns every time. Reign, Jesus reign. King of Zion, Judah's lion. Reign, reign in our hearts. Reign among us and let us see that you are supreme and you are the only one. Lift up the name of the Lord in this house today. And wherever you are, lift up the name of Jesus. In your cars, your bedrooms, your dining hall, just lift up the name of the Lord and give him worship this morning. For our God is worthy to be praised. Hallelujah. We honor him today. Hallelujah. And we bless his name forevermore. Clap your hands in the south today. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. At this time, oh, thank the Lord. Oh, what a time we have yesterday. While the snow was coming, we were locked in prayer. Oh, praise God. Asking the Lord for vision. Asking the Lord to open our eyes so that we might see clearly the things that he wants us to do. We might hear what he wants us to hear. And oh, what a time of prayer. I trust that every heart that were tuned in were blessed and you have received something. There's a takeaway that you have this morning that you can really munch on for the rest of our lives. Amen. Amen. Because we pray and God delivers. Amen. And so when we, when we join in this session, it's not to just occupy time or to just lock in a space, but it's a time when we seek the Lord, and I know that the Lord heard our cry, and he answers us. Let us go to him at this time in prayer as we prepare to read from Psalm 121, our morning's lessons. Let us all pray. Eternal God, we thank you today. And we praise your gracious name. Father in heaven, we look to you, O oh God. O oh God, uh, we won't be overwhelmed. We thank you this morning, Father, for you are the God, Lord, that we can rely on. The God that knows how. You are God and there is none beside you, Father. And we just worship your name today. We thank you, God, that in spite of it all, we are able to assemble together this morning in thy house to praise and worship your name. We pray, eternal God, that you will continue to lead and guide our hearts. And I pray today, Father, that this service, Father, 
will reach far and wide, and every heart, every listener will be blessed, O oh God. We look to you today, and we give you honor. Remember those this morning that are, O oh God, not feeling well, those who are sick, and those who are dismayed. We pray, eternal God, that you would, O oh God, see your people through. You would help them through, O oh God, whatever they might be facing at this particular time. Eternal God, you're the God of comfort. You're the God of strength. You're the God of refuge. You're the rock, O oh God, on our shield. And today we stand upon you, the solid rock. Bless us this morning and bless our gathering here and bless today this service. Everything that should be said and done, may you receive praise and honor as we worship you, the great King, our great God, above all other. We thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Bless the Lord. Our scripture reading comes to us from Psalm 121. And we will read together. If you are there, say amen. Thank God. Let's begin. I will lift mine eyes unto the hills, from whence cometh my help. My help cometh from the Lord, which made heaven and earth. He will not suffer thy foot to be moved. He that keepeth thee will not slumber. Behold, he that keepeth Israel shall neither slumber nor sleep. The Lord is thy keeper, the Lord is thy shade upon thy right hand. The sun shall not smite thee by day, nor the moon by night. The Lord shall preserve thee from all evil. He shall preserve thy soul. The Lord shall preserve thy going out and thy coming in from this time forth and even forevermore. Praise ye the Lord. This is the word of the Lord. And we give him honor because he promised to preserve us. Amen. You may be seated and we will have the announcement and welcome right at this time. Praise the name of Jesus. You can trust God to save you for eternity. You can trust Him to lead you for a lifetime. Good morning, everyone. I just want to thank you for coming out and worshiping with us today. If this is your first time with us, the Hempstead Church of God of Prophecy extends the warmest welcome to you. Birthday greetings going out to Adriel Brown, Owen Lowe, Minister Sharia Hall, Alexandra Brathwaite and Anne-Marie East wishing you all a special day when your day arrives. This week Wednesday February 2nd at 7 30 p.m. will be our next core and sub leader meeting. It will be held at our local church. This Saturday the men's ministry will be having a men's night here at 6 p.m. Iron sharpens iron so one man sharpens another. Come out and be our guest. Next week, Wednesday, February 9th, will be our next quarterly business conference at 7.30 p.m. This will be in person for the quarter ending December 31st. The Couples Ministry will be hosting a Valentine's Day event on Saturday, February 12th. This will be at 6 p.m. Tickets are available for purchase. This will be $40 per couple and the attire for the event will be semi-formal. For more information, contact Brother and Sister Hutchinson or Brother and Sister Shand. Thanks again for joining us. 
On behalf of our hosts, Bishop Carlton Chambers, First Lady Chambers, and all the ministerial body, we want to thank you for worshiping with us today. Until next time, be safe and stay blessed. Special attention, all of them are important. I want to thank all of you that made it out today. In spite of it all, you are here. Can we praise the Lord? Praise the Lord. It's that time of the morning when we will be worshiping the Lord with our tithes and our offering, and we will be giving back a portion of that which the Lord has blessed us with. For those of you who are unable to be in the house today, you can also join in this time of worship. There are ways to give, and you will see those different option on the screen. This time you can tap in any of them and you can pay online and you will still be worshiping with your tithes and your offering. So feel free to go right ahead at this time and just start to pay your tithes and offering by that means, knowing that you are unable to be here today. Those of us who are here, you want to pay by debit card. There is someone at the machine and they will assist you. At this time, bow your heads as we pray God's blessing on the tithes and offering. Father, we thank you for what thou has blessed us with, thou has been our provider throughout the ages. We want to thank you, Lord God, that you never stop providing. And even at this time, we come, Lord, to worship you with paying our tithes and giving our free will offering, we pray that, God, we will do it as unto you and let you be glorified. Bless the tithes and offering. Bless all givers, those who are at home, those who will be giving online. We just pray and ask thy blessing on each and every one. We look to you by faith and we receive your blessings in Jesus' name. Amen. Stand with me and follow the direction of the ushers. He will lead us to that right city when we all, when we all, hallelujah, what a day of rejoicing that will be. So let us continue to allow him to hold our hand because he wants to lead us there. 
God bless you. Over to my pastor, Bishop Chambers. Give the Lord a good shout of praise. Thank God for this another day. Behold how good and pleasant it is. For brethren to dwell together in unity. So I welcome, I welcome everyone that present in the house and those that may be viewing by way of live stream. I greet you all in the matchless name of Jesus the Christ. How a soon coming king, we know according to the word, he is on his way. And so the church must be ready, ready to meet the bridegroom. Amen. As we understand, the church is the scribe as his bride. And she's making herself ready. And I believe the Lord have it all arranged, all planned. Some things that is happening now might not uh, you know, make us feel comfortable. But God knows what he's doing. Some things he will not cancel. Not because we are complaining or we are carrying on. And we are telling him if he doesn't, then we won't. It doesn't really faze him. It's up to us whether we want to serve him or not. But he's God. Change it not. And so we want to just give the Lord thanks and praise for his keeping care and his tender mercies that he's extending unto us. And each day that we're able to see, we thank him for today. We don't know about tomorrow, but we know about now. Now, and we will give him all that do him, and that is worship. I'm not even going to talk about the snow and all those things because it's winter. Amen. And all these things are expected. It's not something alarming. And it is unusual that it snow in New York. We know it used to be worse. And we're grateful to the Lord. That maybe one per month, those months that makes up winter, maybe one or two. Uh, but it used to be every day every day amen pile up and pile up and pile up and pile up but we still had church back then we still had church back then amen and we're not going to allow every little thing uh, to push us back and i know some areas is dangerous you're not able to dig out of, of that unexpected amount of snow and i'm not being uh, foolish or ridiculous that it doesn't matter you still should come i want it to be safe for everyone safe for everyone but we don't want to find excuses we we'll wait for these things and give us reason not to be in the house when we could have been in the house amen so the lord bless you we are getting ready to receive the word but before our the ministry quasim uh, comes i'm going to call on my brother vladimir uh, as per usual and he will just grace us Be not dismayed, whatever be tired, God will take care of you. Beneath his wings of love abide, yes, God, will. God will take care of you. God will take care of you Hallelujah. through every day or all the way yes. he will take care, take care of you god will take care of you through day 
days of toils when your heart does fail, God will take care of you. When dangers fears your path assail, God will take care of you. God will take care of you through every day, all of the way. He will take care of you. God will take care of you. All you may need, He will. take care of you oh, oh, oh. when nothing you ask will be denied God will take care of you oh, oh, oh. God will take care of you through every day all of the way God will take care of you. Lean weary one upon his rest. God will take care of you. God will take care of you through every day. And that's why we are here. It's because of his keeping care. And we're grateful. Again, just to reiterate, Wednesday coming will be our core and sub leaders meeting. And I'm looking forward for all our core and sub leaders to be present so we can go over some things as we go forward in ministry. If you don't mind, we just stand. We bring on our speaker that God will use him. Amen. Today kind of looks like 2020. Amen. Yep. Praise the Lord. So it it I used to this. I used to this. Amen. 2020 was just maybe 
10 of us here amen but we still had church we still had church amen but thank god thank god minister would you come as you receive our ministry quasi amen hallelujah somebody say amen 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 and shall amen. we open our mouth and begin to thank god hallelujah thank god. Open your mouth and thank God for thank God for bringing us here today. Hallelujah! Thank God for His taking care of us. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. He surely, surely is taking care of us. Open your mouth and begin to thank Him for taking care of you. I want to hear somebody thanking God. I want to hear somebody say thank you, Jesus, for taking care of us. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Thank you, Jesus. 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 Thank you Lord. Hallelujah. say thank you this morning we, we give you praise we give you all the glory thank you for your faithfulness thank you for everything you do for us like waking us up this morning and giving us food and water and keeping us and bringing us to the church this morning in spite of the circumstances outside here you were able to bring us of a truth you are taking care of us and we ask you to receive glory you took care of us yesterday today you will take care of us and tomorrow you will take care of us and by faith we thank you blessed be your name you will make tomorrow better than today because today will be better than yesterday blessed be your name Thank you for every one of us here gathered this morning. And thank you for those who are watching us, oh God, and those who are with us over the internet and worshiping with us this morning. Together we join our faith together. I ask you to receive glory. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Somebody say amen. 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 Somebody say thank you, Jesus. Sit down. God bless you. Sit down. God bless you. God bless you. Sit down. Thank you for coming to the church this morning. I give God all the praise and all the glory and all the honor for his faithfulness. I bring greetings to the man of God and the first lady and all the ministers and you that are there. Thank you for your prayers, supporting us with your prayers. And making it possible for the work of the ministry to continue to go on. Somebody say, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. 
This morning, God put a message in my heart. Maybe the message is for me. I'm going to share it with all of us today. Somebody said, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. I want to speak on what I call facing the future without fear. Facing tomorrow without fear. Hallelujah. The Bible said, or Bible commentators said there are about uh, 365 fear knots in the Bible. Uh, and uh, that means every day there is fear not for you. There's fear not for me. Every day God is telling us not to be afraid. Hallelujah. And when God says don't be afraid, it means there is something in the way that possibly can frighten you. Hallelujah. So I want to read the book of Second Timothy, chapter 1, verse 7. Second Timothy, chapter 1, verse 7 says, For God had not given us... Are you there? Second Timothy, chapter 1, verse 7. You found it? Amen. All right. Say, so for God has not given us the spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of sound mind. Amen. Lord, we thank you. For the scripture cannot be broken. And the scripture has said you have not given us the spirit of fear, but of love, of power and sound mind. So this morning we pray that the spirit of love and sound mind and power will be visible and manifest in our lives. That your name be glorified. Thank you, Father. Thank you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. The Bible said that God has not given us the spirit of fear. And I want to share what God put in my heart, facing the future without fear. Facing tomorrow without fear. Uh, we know there is two types of fear. The fear of God and the fear of unknown. The fear of God we should have. The Bible says that the fear of God is the beginning of wisdom. So when we have the fear of God, the kind of fear that brother Joseph, the son of Jacob had, when Mrs. Potiphar invited him to bed, he said, no, how can I do this wickedness against my God? That's the fear of God, that kind of fear we should have. But when I say facing the tomorrow without fear, I'm talking about the fear of the known, the fear of the enemy. And when the Bible says that God has not given us the fear, the spirit of fear, that's the fear of the unknown, the fear of the devil, the fear of tomorrow, the fear about the circumstances I will face. God says we can face tomorrow without fear. We can face tomorrow with boldness. No matter what we go through today, we can face tomorrow with assurance that God is on our side. Somebody say amen. I don't know what you are afraid of. What is that thing that you remember you are scared and you are afraid? God is telling us today that we can know we should, we should look at that thing in the face and confront it, knowing that God will give us victory. Amen. Somebody say amen. The song we had this morning that said that God is taking care of us. Or God will take care of us. I said God is taking care of us. He is the one taking care of us. He's the one keeping us every day. He's the one helping us. He's our Father. Jesus said that I come that you may have life and have it more abundantly. So everything he does is that he shall be well with us. Hallelujah. In the book of Jeremiah, at 29 verse 3, he said, I know the thought I have, I think, towards you. Yes. Thought of peace and joy, not thought of evil. 
So when, when evil threatens you, you know that it is it's not from God. Hallelujah. For God has not given us the spirit of fear. What can we learn from there? We shall learn from there that fear is a spirit. Fear is a spirit. And that's why we can bind it and cast it out. Because it is a spirit. But it's not from God. It's from the enemy. Hallelujah. The enemy comes to threaten us. And everything he tells us is a lie. The devil is a liar. Hallelujah. And if fear is a spirit, it means that love is a spirit. Power. There is power, spirit of power, spirit of love, spirit of sound mind, spirit of self-control. So if fear is a spirit, it also means that love is a spirit. That's the spirit we should have. Somebody say amen. amen. <clears> that the spirit, the kind of spirit we have, the spirit of love, the spirit of power, the spirit of sound mind or self-control. Hallelujah. So we can face tomorrow with boldness, without fear, without fear of any, any evil, even though it is there. Even, even driving to church this morning can be scary. Uh, step out, there are some, some people, their cars are still buried in the snow. So when you look outside, you can be scared. But God is telling us that we can face Tomorrow without fear. Knowing that God will help us. Somebody say amen. amen. Towards the end of the ministry of Jesus, he spent all his time talking to his disciples. Spent time. John recorded it. If you, if you read the book of John from, from chapter 13 down to chapter 17, is the discourse and the things Jesus discussed with his disciples. In John chapter 14, verse 1, he said, Let not your heart be troubled. Let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. Believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. I'll go and prepare a place for you. When I'm done, I will come back and will take you. And so that where, you, where I am, you may be there also. Forever and ever and ever. Somebody say amen. amen. Jesus told them, let not your heart be troubled. And another place, he said, let not your heart be troubled and let it not be afraid. Yes. Don't be afraid. Don't be afraid. Let not your heart be afraid. Let it not be troubled. Jesus told them, let not your heart be troubled because he knew that after his departure, a number of things will happen that will be enough to trouble their heart. He knew that a lot of things will happen to them that will be enough to trouble their hearts. Even in our times, in our generation, Jesus also knows that a number of things can happen to us that will be enough to trouble us and put fears in us. And that's why he says, we can face tomorrow without fear. And he told them, let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. Because he knew that after his departure, you know, he told them a lot of things in those places, in that discourse he had with them. Let not your heart be troubled. But he knew that after his departure, a lot of things will happen. For example, Jesus knew that after his departure, James, the brother of John, would be arrested, picked up by Herod, and killed with a sword. The Bible said in Acts of the Apostles, chapter 12, from verse 1, that Herod laid his hand upon the church. He picked up James, the brother of John, and killed him with a sword. That's enough to trouble somebody's heart. That's enough to put fears in people. That's enough to put fear in Peter, in James, even James, the, the lost brother. You know, that's enough to frighten them. You know, 
James, the son of Zebedee, had a mother. That's enough to make his mother afraid. That's enough to trouble their heart. Jesus knew that all these things would happen when he was telling them, let not your heart be troubled. And the Bible said that when Herod saw that this pleased the Jews, the Jews were happy because James was killed with a sword. That's how bad religion is. Religion is terrible. Religion is, is not good. Christianity is not a religion. Christianity is the life of God in man. Living the life of Christ. That's what Christianity is all about. That's why God gave us the spirit of love. The spirit of sound mind. The spirit of power to live for him. Because religion is terrible. Religious people were celebrating. They heard that James was dead and they were celebrating. They were happy. They were singing and dancing. And when the Bible says when Herod saw that that pleased the Jews, he laid hand on Peter and put him in prison. And he was hoping that after Easter, he would bring Peter from the prison and kill him. That's enough to trouble somebody. And Jesus knew that things like that should happen. Peter had a wife. We could see from the Bible that's enough to make his wife afraid, crying, troubled. That's enough to scatter the church. That's enough, and that was the intention of the devil and Herod. Remember, I'm talking about facing tomorrow without fears. But God knows that in our generation, things will happen that will be enough to trouble our hearts. But God says we can face them without any act of fear. Why? Jesus is in charge. That's why he said, you believe in God, believe also in me. Somebody say amen. amen. And when the, the devil, through Herod, picked Peter and put him in prison, in verse 5, the Bible said that Peter was in prison, but the church was pray, pray, praying and ceaselessly. Same, King James Version says they were praying without ceasing, without stopping. Amen. They were praying for him. They prayed and prayed and prayed and prayed and prayed and prayed non-stop. You know the story. You know that as they prayed and prayed, you know, James, the lost brother, wrote in his epistle, he said, is anyone afflicted? Let him pray. Let him pray. That means prayer is a solution to affliction. Prayer is a solution to difficulties. God answers prayers. God answers prayers. And as they prayed and prayed and prayed, the Bible said that the same night that Herod wanted to bring out Peter from prison, the same night, hallelujah, the same night, God sent an angel. And when the angel came, it's my prayer that one day you will confront an angel. It's my prayer that you have an encounter with an angel. And when you do, your life will never remain the same again. Somebody say amen. amen. One angel came when they had centurion of soldiers guiding Peter. The Bible said that that particular night, Peter was sleeping. In the, I don't know how the kind of man that man was. That he will be in that condition and he will be sleeping. There are so many people, the situation they passed through has kept them sleepless nights. They cannot sleep because of the things they go through. But in that situation, Peter was able to sleep. That is why no matter the situation or circumstances we pass through, we can remain calm. We can remain fearless. We can remain comfortable in the hand of Jehovah, Amen. knowing that he will not leave us, neither will he forsake us. Somebody say amen. amen. Knowing that he's on our side, knowing that he will help us, knowing that he will fight for us, 
The Bible said the same night that Peter was going to be brought out from prison and slaughter. God sent an angel. Why? The church was praying. The church was praying. They gathered in the house. They were, they were not praying in the cathedral, not in the temple. They gathered in the house of John Mark. The mother had a good house. And he, she gave out the house. For the church to use. They gathered there and they were praying. They were praying. They were praying. And the Bible said the same night that Peter was to be brought out to King, God sent an angel. And when the angel came, the angel tapped Peter. He said, Man, get up. Put on your jacket. Put on your sandal. Hallelujah. Look who wrote the book, the book of Acts of the Apostle said that. Peter thought he was dreaming. He thought he was sleeping and, and seeing a vision. He didn't know it was happening for real. You know, by the time the Jews said that when God turned around our captivity, he said we were like men that dream. There are some things that God will do in our lives we think it's a dream. There are some things God will give you. He will ask, this, this gift, is it for me or is it for my neighbor? There's things God will do in your life. It will be so good, so real, so wonderful. And God will do something new in our lives. That's why we should face tomorrow without fear. Amen. Somebody say amen. amen. Face the future without fear. And as Peter was sleeping, the angel asked him, wake up. He got up, put on your jacket. And the Bible said that Peter thought he was dreaming. And he followed an angel. When they came out, at the city gate, the great gate, the gate opened by itself. Because the angel was standing there. The gate opened, and the Bible said they passed through. It was at that time that the angel disappeared. And Peter came to himself. He said that, for real, I know this is real. It's not a dream. And I know that God has sent his angels to deliver me from the hand of Herod. Whichever Herod it is after your life, God will send deliverance. Amen. Are you listening to me? God will send deliverance. God will send help. This morning we read, the, 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 the man of God led us to read where the Bible said that our help comes from Jehovah, who made heaven and earth. God will send help. That is why we should confront tomorrow without fear, knowing that God will send help. Knowing that God will not leave us. Knowing that God will not abandon us. Knowing that God will make a way. Knowing that God will answer prayers. Knowing that God will send an angel. Only one. One is enough to take care of the situation. Somebody say, Thank you, Jesus. And the Bible said that when Peter came to himself, he said that I know that God has sent his angel to deliver me from the hand of Herod and from the expectation of all the Jews. Whatever your enemies are expecting to happen, God will bring it to naught. The expectations will be disappointed. Whatever my enemies are expecting, God will disappoint my enemies. God will fight the battle. God will take care of the situation. God will fight. As long as we continue to serve him and worship him, God will continue to fight for us. Hallelujah. And the Bible said that this Peter went to the house of John Mark where they were praying. And he knocked on the door. Come, 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 come. Hallelujah. And a small girl called Rhoda had the knock. Others had a knock and they were afraid. They couldn't come to the door. You think others did not hear the knock? They had it. But only Rhoda. Children can be fearless. They can be bold. They can be courageous. Hallelujah. I remember the first day where I was co we were coming to America with my children. We got to Amsterdam. These boys saw escalator 
They were not afraid. I was afraid because I thought it would carry me away. But these boys were not afraid. They jumped into it. I was saying, come back. Where? They didn't listen to me. Children can be bold. Hallelujah. Children can be bold and courageous. Rhoda came to the door and, and I said, who is that? Peter said, I'm the one. Because of joy, this small girl rushed back. I went to tell the people praying. He said, stop praying. Peter is at the door. They said, shut up your mouth. You don't know what they're talking about. Peter is in prison. That's why we're praying. You see, sometimes we'll be praying and we'll not be expecting anything to happen. This were a group of people who were praying for something. The answer came. They said, no, that's not the answer. When we are praying, we should be expecting something to happen. You know why? God answers prayers. When we pray, expect something to happen. God hears our prayers. And God answers our prayers. I know God answers prayers. Because I have prayed and I've seen an answer. So when I pray, I expect an answer. This group of brethren, they were praying. They were praying. They were not expecting an answer. So when the answer came, they didn't recognize it. When the answer came, they didn't recognize it. They doubted it. But brethren, when we pray, let us expect an answer. When you ask God for a baby boy, expect a baby boy. When you ask God for bread, expect bread. Jesus said that when you ask him for bread, he will not give you stone. When you ask him for fish, he will not give you scorpion. God gives good things. He's a good God. He's a loving God. He is taking care of us. Hallelujah. I, like, I love that song. That song was timely. God will take care of us. And he's taking care of us. Somebody shout hallelujah. hallelujah. So when we pray, let us expect an answer. Somebody say amen. amen. These brethren, they, were, they are showing us what we should do with the challenges we face. They are showing us what we should do. I said before that, James said that, is anyone afflicted, let him pray. So which means that prayer is an answer to the affliction. Is anyone tormented? Let him pray. They are showing us what we should do with our challenges. What we should do with them. Tell them to God in prayer. They are showing us what we should do with all the things that bring fears in our hearts. Tell them to God in prayer. God answers prayers. Somebody may say, Pastor, I've been praying, but I never saw us continue to pray. The Bible said there that they prayed without ceasing. There is such thing that is called as praying through. When you have prayed through, when you pray, you know the answer has come. Hallelujah. A brother was facing a challenge, and he declared 21 days fasting. And he prayed and prayed and fasted and prayed. On the 14th day, the answer came. And when the answer came, God asked him to stop fasting. He said, okay, thank God the answer came, but I have declared 21 days fast. Now we, I will continue until 21 days. And the 15th day, he could no longer fast. He had no power. He had no energy. He was collapsing because God had taken off his hand. God, God had taken off his son. He's on his own. It was at that time he stopped the fast, knowing fully well that God has answered. There is such thing as praying through. When you pray through, you know the answer has come. Somebody say amen. amen. Facing tomorrow without fear. Whatever that is putting fear in our heart, what we need to do is to take it to God in prayer. Because Jesus said, believe in God, believe also in me. I will take care of it. I will help you. I will fight for you. 
The battle is the Lord's. He will fight for us. Somebody say amen. amen. Like I said, somebody may say, I have been praying and praying. When will I stop? Continue to pray. They pray without ceasing. Continue to pray. Or pray until you know the answer has come. Somebody say amen. amen. In the book of Luke chapter 1, we saw the story of Zechariah. Zechariah was a priest and the Bible said that one day he came to the temple like this to burn incense. As he entered an angel, angel Gabriel came down standing before him. And he told him, Zechariah, your prayers have been answered. Somebody say amen. amen. Your, son, your wife Elizabeth is going to bring forth a son and you call his name John. And Zechariah told us the angel, do you know what you are talking about? Do you know, are you sure the message is for me? I said that sometimes a message will be too good. You will think it's for your neighbor. Because Zechariah, I don't know how many years they prayed. I don't know how many years they prayed. The other day I said that when a woman gets married and the woman does not have a child, for many years. It's not comfortable. Even the angels said that people were calling Elizabeth barren. Barren woman. When the angel, the same angel went to, the, to, to Mary, said, look at your cousin Elizabeth. People were calling barren. She's not pregnant. Somebody say amen. amen. And the angel told John, your prayer has been answered. Your prayer has been answered. And Zechariah began to doubt, and the angel told him, because, say, I am old man, and my, my wife is advanced in age. This is a, I don't know how many years they prayed. I don't know how many years they prayed. It means that from the time they discovered that Elizabeth was barren, they began to pray. They began to pray. Could be 10 years, could be 20 years, could be 30 years. They continue to pray. But one day, somebody say one day. One day came in their life. Like I know that one day will come in your life. One day came in their life. Like I know that one day is coming for us. A day of joy. A day of peace. A day of good news. A day of celebration. A day of wonderful words. A day we will meet somebody that will tell us something interesting. My prayer is that one day I will meet an angel. And the angel will give me good news. Good news that will cause me to dance and celebrate. Somebody shout hallelujah. One day, Zachariah, after many, many years of agony, after many, many years of expecting, he went into the temple and he met an angel. An angel told him good news. He said, your wife, Elizabeth, not another woman, not your concubine, not your girlfriend, but your own wife, called Elizabeth, in her own age, she will give you a son. It was too good to be true. It was like a dream. Zachariah thought he was dreaming. And the angel struck him with dumbness. He said, you are going to be dumb for nine months. When the son was born, will be born, he begin to speak. Zachariah spent extra time in the temple burning incense. And people outside were worried. What is he still doing there? When he came out, he wasn't talking again. And he said, oh, he must have seen a vision. Somebody shout hallelujah. I don't know how many years he prayed. But he prayed through. She said, continue to pray. Continue to pray. Don't give up. Don't stop. No matter what the challenge is. No matter what the issue is. No matter what is that thing that put fears in your heart, take it to God in prayer. Continue to pray. 
One day, the God of Anna will hear you. Somebody say amen. amen. Anna prayed and prayed and prayed until one day she prayed through. She prayed through. She came to the house of God in Shiloh and she began to pray. She prayed such a prayer that heaven heard and earth heard and the man of God heard. And the man of God came to her and prophesied over her life. There is such a prayer you will pray. You will know that God has answered. She said, continue to pray until you are sure that God has heard your voice. Pray until you know that God has answered your prayer. Because this God answers prayers. I am a witness that God answers prayers. Hallelujah. I have faced challenges that made me to know that God answers prayers. In the year 2015, my wife was very sick. Some of you know the story. She was so sick that so many people gave up hope. Every day I would come to Good Samaritan Hospital, I would prophesy over her. I would say, you will walk out of this hospital on your two feet. It was like a joke. But it didn't happen, it came to pass. We continued to pray and pray and pray. At the time, the hospital was getting ready to discharge her to a rehab at Westbury. One night, God sent an angel. And my wife saw the angel. And the angel came to minister to her. So in the morning, she recovered. She could eat by herself. She could walk to the bathroom to take her shower. She could do so many things. The doctor came and took off the, 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 the wire in her neck and tape it. And the other doctor came and said, you are ready to go home. Not to rehab, but back to her house. God answers prayers. God answers prayers. I have a testimony that when you pray, God will answer. And this God we are serving does not show partiality. If he answered our prayers, he will answer your own. You answer your own. Anna continued to pray and pray and pray and pray. Heaven had her. Earth had her. The man of God had her. Eli came to her. At the end, and Eli prophesied over her. He said, may the God of the Jews, unto whom you have come, may he hear you. Answer your prayers. Anna chorus, amen. And the Bible said that she went home and she was no longer sad. Her sad countenance disappeared. Why? She was convinced that she had prayed through. In the house where she'll be sweeping, she'll be singing. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. She'll be singing. In the morning, he said, God, God, you are so good. God, you are, you are so good. God, you are so good. You are so good to me. She'll be singing while washing plates in the kitchen. She'll be singing. She'll be singing every day. This kind God, oh. I never see your kind, oh. This kind God, oh. Blessed be your holy name. She'll be singing and singing. Her rival Penina, who used to mock her, she said, say, what is wrong with this woman? What happened to her? Is she dreaming? What happened to her? She changed. She's no longer sad. She said, when you pray through, joy will be in your life. You will no longer be sad. Because you know that God has had you. God has answered you. You begin to sing a good song. Hallelujah. We can face tomorrow without fear. We can face tomorrow 
confident that God will answer our prayers. We can face tomorrow confident that God will hear us. He's going to help us. You can only have fear if you don't know Jesus, your Lord and personal Savior. But if you know him, be confident that he will help you. He will help you. If you don't know him, don't leave this place without giving your life to him. Don't leave this place without saying, Lord Jesus, come into my heart. Be my Lord and personal Savior. He's going to hear you. Shall we rise up to pray? Rise up. And begin to pray. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 Lord, we give you praise. We thank you. Because we know we can face tomorrow knowing that you will help us. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name we pray. Thank you, Jesus. answers our prayers and he did not give us that spirit of fear but of love and power and of a sound mind praise God in the same way that Paul reminded the young minister well, whatever he was going through whatever he was going through reminded him that God did not give him it's the same thing to us today god did not give us a spirit of fear all of love and power and a sound mind things happen sometimes that your spirit is cast down you're at a place and you wonder 
how did I get here? And at the point of giving up, but then a word comes, reminded us, praise God, that there is a gift in you. There's a gift in you. There is a power in you. All you need to do is to stir it up. Hallelujah. God's word is so powerful. Amen. It's amazing how many messages you can get in a passage of scriptures. Amen. No one can exhaust the word of God. Amen. Amen. But praise the Lord. You come up with different inspiration. Amen. From the scripture. But we are going to just stay with the inspiration that was given to our minister. Amen. And I don't want to confuse another thought. We'll just stay right there. Amen. Behind the power of prayer. Thank God. Father, we thank you today. We thank you for your man servant. Whom, Lord, you have prepared to just bring the word today. A word of hope. A word of life. A word of consolation. A reminder to us, oh God, that you're still a God of possibilities. And we need not to give in. Lord, we thank you for your word reminding us as what you have given and how we should use it. Bless your people as we continue on this wonderful journey of life in your precious name we pray god bless you god bless you amen minister i just come in with a box of joy Share with you now, you ready? Goes like this. You make the blind man see. Make the lame man walk again. You cause the dead to rest. And that's why we dance in liberty. Cause you're doing it all again. Yeah, yeah. Cause you're doing it all again. Sing God. 